Trail back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20-10. Touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes! Oh, yes! Goals out of the place. The yes! Yes! The Huskies win their first state championship. Good afternoon and welcome to the Andover Athletic Field. I'm Joe Rulin along with Tim Anderson and this is Boys High School Baseball coming your way on the QCTV matinee presentation. The Andover Huskies hosting the Spring Lake Park Panthers. They come in with a record of 6-11. and 11. Meanwhile, Andover has put together a three-game win streak including a win over Centennial and two this past weekend over Moorhead. They now have a record of nine and seven. Couple of good teams coming at it, but trying to get themselves right here for section plate. So one thing we know about the, this conference in general when it comes to baseball, softball, is it just feels like on any given day anybody can beat anybody uh, if you got some good pitching going or you can get a couple of timely hits and, and, and take care of the ball. And that's kind of been the, the case for Andover. On the days that they've pitched and on the days that they have but able to keep it clean in the infield and not make a ton of errors, they've been winning ball games. On the days where that's been a little bit of a struggle, that's been the days that they've had challenges. And so they're clearly looking to get a big one here today. This is a home game for them. They want to take care of business tonight, get to 10-7. and seven. And as we wind down this regular season, every win matters as you start moving towards section play, seating play, all of that. Every win's critical. you got to get things like this tonight if you're Andover. Tired look at the uh, batting order coming up here for Spring Lake Park. As I mentioned, they come in at 6 and 11. They start with uh, Gretner at third base. Meanwhile, uh, Balsimo is also at uh, hitting second. He is uh, uh, going to be playing, uh, as we said there, hitting second, excuse me. And then also Ian Rell, Ian Rell batting third, followed by Tulsa. Braden Tulsa, he is hitting fourth. Connor Larson hitting fifth, followed by Ashton Tucker. And then we have Carson, Scott Carson rather, followed by Anders Holland and Darren Tran running out that lineup starting pitcher uh, this evening and will be Carson Bentrot for Spring Lake Park. Meanwhile, defensive set for Andover, you get a quick look. Heller at center field, Law making his first start in left field, first start in varsity. Uh, meanwhile, Richards is in right field. Uh, at third base is Eckes followed by Kelly at short, both of those two seniors, Co. One to keep an eye on, a good fielder, a freshman, making a start at second. And then Denicky at first, Abbas behind the dish, and Josh Novak, a phenomenal pitcher with a great career. We'll talk about his performance over the past three years, but on the mound tonight here for Andover, Novak comes in with an impressive ERA of .64 and a record of 4-0. Yeah, he's been tough to deal with this season, having another really strong year. And there are some great arms in this conference. Novak certainly one of them. We'll see how he looks tonight against this Spring Lake Park team that really needs to get some good momentum themselves. First pitch to Hopper to Kelly at short. Makes the throw in the dirt, but digging it out. Denicky for the out. Critical first swing to the bat. First ball in play. The two Hopper to Kelly. Under throws, but Denicky. There to clean it up. Wouldn't be surprised if you see Spring Lake Park do that a little more often, Joe. Go ahead and try to get the first pitch swing and maybe try to sit fastball, see if you can put the ball in play quickly and challenge the defense of Andover to make plays. And right there's an example. You get the candy hop, it's short, but a tough throw over to first, and they almost were able to get on with an error. But a good play by Denicky to get that one out for the Huskies. Last outing was against uh, four Novak was an outing against Centennial, which he struck out 12 and allowed just two hits. He has three strong pitches, and you saw one of them there. Another good fastball, good fastball, good slider, good changeup, has command and confidence to throw any one of those pitches at any given time. And he's ahead here on the count 0-2 to Balsamo. Little different, too, works completely out of the stretch, so he likes to work quickly, get that ball on top of you fast. Right now just working the corner with the outside fastballs and uh, challenging uh, the first baseman, Jay Balsamo here. Balsamo hitting uh, well this year at a 400 average and finding himself on base quite often himself. Yeah, as a result, leading the team in runs with 17. You mentioned a 450 average for the first baseman. Two and two as he tried the breaking pitch that time, did 
Novak, 4-0 this year in an ERA south of one. In fact, 0.64. Just missed that time. Nice look, though, from Novak. And again, I like that he worked ahead with the fastball, but then he's tried to kind of go a little soft. He went low on kind of a waste pitch. That time a little soft away. He'll probably try to bust back with a fastball here. Outfield straight away. Hardly any wind at all. He just probably cursed it. There's a pop-up, looks to Eckes at third, backing up as Kelly, and brought in for out number two by Eckes, playing third base, the senior. Two down now, and that'll bring up the number three hitter, and Ian Rell. A little surprised at that at bat, having to work the three ball count there. Novak's stuff is so good that I don't know if you need to nibble too much. Right there, he just kind of brought it to Balsamo and kind of said, go ahead and try to hit this one if you can. Wouldn't be I'd like to see him do a little more of that here in the early going. Just go ahead, establish yourself, dare him to hit it. Rell having one heck of a season. Breaking pitch there. The lead off the at bat to Rell, who's hitting 309 on the season. Couple of home runs. First in the team and triples with three, and also 13 RBIs. Beautiful night. No wind, really. Fouled off down that first baseline and. Tim, you see the first four or five hitters here for Spring Lake Park, and they all can rock at it. And they've got some power and some impressive averages. But the airs have been a problem, and speaking with the head coach for Spring Lake Park before the game. Nice off speed. That old frozen pizza look when those yeah. legs tend to lock up. Yeah, you're sitting on one thing. You're looking maybe fastball. You're looking for... You know, something kind of out over the plate, and then you get kind of a broken off 12 6 curveball. Swung on and missed. That'll end the inning. Three up, three down. I like to call that a Wisconsin inning. You get in, you get out. First strikeout victim for Novak. Novak now is just 28 strikeouts away from setting the record here at Andover and gets his first here of the night. Yeah, not half bad and a very good inning for Novak, working very efficiently, getting off to a good start. It looked like another ball came in, too, on that last play. That was sort of weird. That strikeout happened, and a ball went flying. That, that was sort of weird. That was really strange, and I thought, was I it I thought maybe he me? fouled it. That, you know, and it skipped, that was, you know. That's exactly what I had, and yeah. I thought that when I saw this wing, I thought it was a foul ball. Let's take a look here at the Andover Huskies and their batting lineup here this afternoon, and it's going to be Patty Kelly, shortstop, a senior, leading off as he has the past couple of years, Mason Eckes, one of the top averages on the team, hitting second and playing third. Luke Denicky. Denicky, I thought, had an impressive basketball season, and he's transformed that and transitioned it as well to the baseball field as well. He's hitting third. Sam Abbas, the catcher, hitting fourth. Meanwhile, Nick Richards, number 16, followed by Keaton Coe. Of course, that name synonymous in uh, Coon Rapids. Certainly is. And he's a freshman here at Andover. Just got... His first couple of starts just over the weekend. So he'll be batting, followed by Brett Bettner. Bettner getting his first varsity at bats this season. And then we run with Drew Law. Of course, you're wondering, Drew Law, any relation to the other Law kid? Of course, it's his brother. He gets his first look in left field, varsity wise. And then the speedster, Teddy Heller, is batting ninth. Across the board for the Panthers defensively, Tran, Tulso, Tucker in the outfield. We like alliteration back there, so that makes good <laughs> sense. In the infield, Grudner's at third, Rell's at short, Holland at second, and Balsamo's at first. Uh, Larson's going to do the catching today for Carson Bentrot, who's going to do the starting for Spring Lake Park. Bentrot comes in with a record of 2-2. Two and two. And... Uh, ERA at about 3.4. First up, Kelly, look at that, playing in at third. Obviously, likes to put the bunt down. Gets things happening for this uh, Husky squad, as I mentioned, the last couple of years. Conventional full windup over the top. Nice job of hiding the ball from Ben Trott. He's going to hide his face there, kind of do the traditional, very traditional pitcher windup and delivery, but it's a really solid fundamental pitching motion. Three hopper, a third hop, a sneaky one, but the play is made at second. Nice play. And uh, first retired, that's Holland with a good glove at second, and Kelly retired four and over. That'll bring up Mason Eckes. 
So you get a look here at the play, a three hopper. I would say that third hop is always kind of the secret sauce. You don't know where that may go. And I think the infield is going to be a factor here tonight. I think it's a little shaggy, and, uh, it, you know, clearly we've had some dry weather here in recent weeks. Uh, the last week has been pretty dry up here in this area, and just I think it is you're starting to see it's, it's starting to dry up and kick up some dirt in this field that maybe wasn't there a month ago, but the field's a little bit uneven, I think, and you might see some weird bounces tonight. Ectus looked at a curveball off the plate. This one sent down the line, and they'll get another run. That's one in one. On the count, as you saw Bentrot throw that first pitch, a good tight spinner, but just out of the strike zone. And you may want to call this field maybe disheveled. What do you think? A little disheveled, maybe. I mean, you know, it just needs a little. You know, it needs a little shave. You know, it needs a little. It needs a little. Uh, you know, it's it's like it's got like a like a five o'clock shadow to it right now. Uh, if yeah, if you may say so. Three <laughs> three twenty four down the lines here. Ekus again. Trying Sends to test that. that. Yeah, absolutely. You might call that a grouping in darts, but uh, Huskies come in with a record of nine and seven. They've won their last three. Team batting average of 260 this season. Nice breaking ball. That had some excellent spin rate on that. Yeah, fouled right off the foot that time of Eckes. You'll feel that in the morning if he doesn't already feel it right now. Interesting thing from Bentrot there, kind of switched things up. Now he's back to hiding his face, but that pitch, he really didn't do that. He came off that pretty quickly, and I thought he was a little easier to pick up that time. Livery here is a two-hopper cut off by third, and retired is Eckes for the second out for Andover, bringing up the number three hitter in Luke Denneke. And I do think if you are going to play on, on fields that could be a little shaggier, maybe it'll be a little slower in the infield when you roll, so all the more reason to be aggressive and that was a nice job there at time by third baseman uh, Gruntner as he stems up on that one to cut that off before letting that really get rolling through the infield and being aggressive. Leader's pitch here, swung on. Denneke lifts this one down the left field line. Looks like it's going to tail foul. And it is. Denneke on the season has a home run and a 317 average. And if you're Ben Trout, I think you want to take note of the fact that Eckes took you on the other side almost out and Denneke was able to turn on you the other way, which tells you that you're not necessarily fooling them. Good breaking pitch. So you switch it up. You throw something off speed right there. Left that up a little high. I'm thinking a little higher than he wanted to and Denneke's down in the count 0-2. Swung on and missed, foul tip into the mitt, and the Huskies are retired, and so is the first inning as it's complete here at Andover. No score between the Huskies and Spring Lake Park Panthers. Second inning coming your way in a moment. These are the days we've been waiting for in Minnesota. In fact, the whole weekend, but a good baseball game with some heat, good sun, no wind, and a couple of teams ready to get out there and score that first run. Joe rolling along with Tim Anderson and Tim so far, three up, three down for both teams. Yeah, really efficient for the pitchers. You're working quick innings, not letting those pitch counts get too high. That's gonna allow you to stay in the game a long time uh, when you can get quick outs like that. Uh, but I also like the fact that both teams are trying to put the ball in play, too. Like, they're trying to keep things moving as well. They're not interested in just sitting there and trying to work counts and being too fine. They want to come up there and be aggressive and hack. And uh, I'm on board with both, with all of that. I co-signed the whole thing. By the way, it is hot, and I left one of my 74 hats at home. So there we go. <laughs> all of my 74 hats at home. So that's not doing me any good. 
Up on the mound, going straight from that stretch as he always has, Josh Novak. First pitch, leadoff, breaking pitch. You always love to see that level of confidence in your stuff. And Novak has done a great job in his three years here with Andover. Telso, by the way. Oh, by the way, when I first saw this average of 500, second pitch up high, but he went after it, kind of locked him up inside. Yeah, he wasn't catching up to that one. That one zipped right past him. First average I saw, 500, and I thought, great, is he like five for 10 or what? No, Telso is 27 of 54 this year. That'll do. Swung on and missed, good job. Could not get around on some major velo on the fastball by Novak, strikeout number two on the afternoon for Novak. Yeah, it's really overpowering stuff there. Just threw the fastball, didn't nibble as we talked about in the first inning, just went after the hitter. And that time was just overpowering. He overmatched Telso, and that's going to hopefully catch the eye of the lefty Connor Larson as he stands in. Larson comes in, 279 average. Not afraid to mix it up is Novak. Novak, by the way, comes in with a career mark of 17 and 3 in his career here at Andover. Nice pitch there, right about the ankles. Yep, and he works quickly. Novak from that stretch position just quickly gets that sign, and once he's got it, he's ready to go. And again, some pitchers really are more comfortable out of this stretch position. Out in front of a changeup that time. He's got a bit of a, like a herky-jerkier type motion from the stretch position, and I think that does a good job of kind of hiding the baseball, but it also kind of it might throw the hitter's timing off just a touch, and that's all you need. Oh, punched out there, a backwards K. A little delay on the call, but nonetheless, third strikeout for Novak here this afternoon. Yeah, three in a row here for Novak, and yeah, that one was a little bit of a, a delayed call, maybe for dramatic effect, but a pretty good pitch there from Novak on the outside part of the plate. Tough to, tough to do much with that if you're Larson. Ashton Tucker now steps in. Tucker playing left field, hitting 268, 12 RBIs on the season for the Panthers. That's Panthers. just not fair when you have to, when you, and you're sitting dead red on a fastball and you get off speed for a first pitch. Tries to walk that up the ladder to see if he can lock him up on that fastball. I mean, he's, the one thing Novak does consistently is get ahead of each hitter. He's done that here, and it's a 1 1 count. Curveball bounced the third, two hop here. Eckes over the Denneke in time. That's another Wisconsin inning. Three up, three down, you get in, you get out. And now it's the Huskies who will try to reach base and get a base runner or get some things happening there. I was gonna say, you're gonna run out of material if that's what you're gonna go with all day, the whole Wisconsin inning thing. Oh, I mean, you're, you, you gotta got... be able to mix it up a little bit is what I'm saying. <laughs> Here's some standings, But you gotta say it enough so it stays on their mental well, hard true. drive, the I've, viewer. Right? I've learned that as a teacher that you have to say it four or five times for it to even be registered as fact. You know, the kids won't pick it up until you've said it four or five times. That's the key. Standings, by the way, in the Northwest Suburban. We talked about how competitive and interesting it is. Champlin Park, nine and two. Elk River nine and three, Anoka eight and three, Centennial seven and four. I think you can kind of see the pattern here. A lot <laughs> of the same stuff. Centennial again, who Anoka just beat seven and four, or Andover just beat, I should say, Rogers seven and five, Blaine six and six, Andover's five and five in the conference, Osseo's five and six. So there's no like, there's really no easy games here. I mean, you really got to show up and play every night. You know, even teams that are you know three and eight, two and nine, like Spring Lake Park, Totino Grace. They're capable of, of giving you a good game, and if you're not careful, you're going to lose on these nights. You've got to play well in the North Suburban every night. And you know what? The defense has to be solid as well, especially in those timely situations. Andover, by the way, has already defeated Champlain Park earlier this year and Elk River, both of those home games. But in talking to um, Pete Anderson, he said the two games that we really just had no chance, that we just... It wasn't a run or two, or it wasn't a situation where our losses to Blaine and Rogers. And Rogers are another stellar team. But it's all about, hey, playing strong D and uh, getting some good timely hitting and kind of setting that tempo and getting out in front, stepping in now. A look for the Huskies. First swing is Abbas. Abbas lifts this one to right field, going back to the fence and making the grab. <laughs> A snow cone web gem that time in right field. A beautiful grab. 
want to say that's at... Tucker out there, perhaps, uh, as they've kind of had to switch the lineups around late. But I think Ashton Tucker shifted from left to right. He makes this play. And you could tell it took him a second to pick this up. But once he realized that, okay, he's not going to hit the wall, he was able to jump up and make that play. Maybe got a little off balance. Maybe that's not the most fundamental way to chase a fly ball. But I'll tell you what, take it anytime you can get it. And I'm sure uh, <laughs> uh, Carter, uh, Carson Bentrot was pretty thrilled about that one. Richards swings at it down the line, a sliding glove save, flash into leather. At first to pull that one out is Balsamo, and he makes a nice defensive play. Two back-to-back -back defensive gems for the Panthers here in the bottom of the second, and two of the Huskies are retired. Wow. Back-to-back. -back. It's Avis and Richards, and now it comes to Keaton Coe. I think, freshman. That, I think that play was harder than the, the fly ball because that thing had a really tough hop to deal with, and he had to backhand that at first and still be able to stay with it and take it over to first base. I mean, that looked like that was going to eat him up the whole way, but he made a great play at first base at Balsamo. Co ahead on the breaking pitch. As I mentioned, just a freshman for Co, hitting 167. Closest Getting thing I games. ever got to the Coe family was a C minus in Coach Jerry Coe's <laughs> economics class senior year of high school. Thank you. Now they're all speed. These two pitchers can mix it up. And, the, you know, the arm slot, the release points are all the same. So you're not picking up a tip or any toward a pitch tail. Now they're breaking pitch. This one's up left a little high and dribbling in foul territory down the third baseline is Co. Yeah, two different ways to go about it. Obviously, Bentrot works from the, the full wind-up and is a little bit more fluid mechanically, not as much herky-jerkiness to the motion. It's a little more smooth. High up top, walks the elevator, and Co goes down swinging. Strikeout for the Huskies. Three up, three down for Andover. Two innings are complete and will return for the third inning. Huskies taking on Spring Lake Park. Welcome back, third inning about to begin, Andover Huskies. Nine and seven, taking on the Panthers with a record. Season with their six wins and uh, 11 losses. Joe Rillen along with Tim Anderson, and we have yet to flip the lineup. In fact, it's uh, been 12 up, 12 down. Yeah, they're they're trying to get us home in time for whatever's supposed to be on at seven on the uh, on the primetime lineups here. I'm for Joe, it's the uh, the all Matlock channel on Pluto. But uh, I mean, you know, hey, he's ready to go for it. That's right, or Colombo. Colombo's fine there. There you go. Leading off with the breaking pitch, setting it up here. As Carson Scott gets a look. Well, it's just a dream start for both starters for the first couple of innings. Work quickly, gets quick outs. Defense makes plays behind you. A couple of timely strikeouts. Just what the doctor ordered. In and on the hands, a good pitch that time. Just no way. I, I, you get so locked up with that ball coming inside. Can't get that barrel head out in front. It's one and one now for Novak. Huskies trying to make it four in a row. High cheese that time. Couldn't get him to chase. And definitely looking to try to get the 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 bite there. Kind of not a, not so much a waste pitch, but definitely more of a try to see if you can climb the ladder here. Novak, good control early on here in this game, throwing it where he wants it. As, you know, as, as I say that, he misses his spot there on the outside part of the plate, which I you know it's the old announcer's jinx. I did it. Really did. good at it. 
But he has really had command all season long, but definitely so far today, already three strikeouts. He's able to get a couple of weak grounders. But there's our first base runner. With that, a walk. Tried to continue to mix it up that time. Hey, for uh, Carson Scott, really only his third at bat of the season. And he draws the first walk and it's the first base runner. Stepping in now is Anders Holland, as you can see where that pitch missed outside. Yeah, you can see a little bit of an overthrow too from Novak. Uh, maybe trying to be a little too fine in that situation. Now who is, that's the second time a ball's just come throwing in in the middle of the field here. And that one is coming from the JV field. Oh, is that what's happening? Oh, that's yeah. right. I was like, so it's just not, nobody's throwing it in. It's just a foul ball from the other side. Man, the fields are too close, I tell you. Well, it's not uncommon for people just to throw a ball at me from time to well, time. Well, and I'm see, that's just it. Now I feel like we're targets mm, right absolutely. here. I'm very concerned being near you because that's the, the vibe you give off. Square the bunt, puts it down. No, hit Good the day. runner. Yep, I did see contact. Ump immediately blows that dead, sends everybody back. That was a, a play eh, that uh, Anoka had used well against Andover. Yeah, and and their one run loss just a couple of, I think it was last Thursday. That yeah, was but. a heck of a game. Yeah, those two teams uh, really locked in on a great game. And, you know, that is one thing you can do from the bottom of the lineup here, especially when you're trying to manufacture some runs against a good pitcher. You might need to lay a bunt down or two. And that's something that this Huskies defense needs to be ready for. Third baseman moves in, Eckes. Eckes ready at third. It's a 0-1 delivery. Another bunt. This one put down. Eckes clouds it and makes a lob over. To first, sometimes that lob, if it's not Ooh. with conviction, it can lift well, its way way over the first baseman's head, well, but they get the out. that close anyway, because I thought Holland ran that out the whole way and made that a tough play at first. And Eckes had to, you know, get it there, but I, I thought it was a little nonchalant. That play was a lot closer than it probably needed to be or should have been. One out runner on second. It's the number nine hitter, and then the Panthers will flip their lineup. Tran steps in. This is where, you know, you used to say back in the day, you know, we needed just a little bingo right here, a little something to the outfield if you're Spring Lake Park, a little, a little seeing eye single, a little ground ball with eyes here. You can score a run, get on the board. Panthers still looking for the first hit. They just got their first base runner on the leadoff walk this inning. And that's what Novak, I think, really wants to get back to doing, pumping that fastball in and kind of daring this bottom part of the order to hit it. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of guys. Scott, the runner at second. Pitch just out of the strike zone. One nice thing about constantly pitching from the stretch, too, if you're Novak, is that this situation doesn't change anything you're doing mechanically. Runners at second, you don't need to hurry anything or do anything differently. You just stay with your routine. Obviously, keep an eye on the runner, but it's not like you have to change your entire delivery to the plate. Trying to look back the runner. Swung on, this one's lifted down the left field line. Foul sliced by Tran. And a little bit behind that pitch. But that's the idea there. That's the little bingo you're looking for. You get that to the left field corner there. You hug that thing down the line the opposite way because you got the left fielder cheating a little bit towards center anyway. It's going to easily score the runner, perhaps put Tran on second base. And yeah. now that you know that that's in the arsenal, you got to start to maybe adjust for that. You may not leave this over the left field or the left uh, or the outside part of the plate this time. Maybe he'll bust him in this time. We'll see. The long left field, the shades a bit closer to that left field line. Look for the pitch and trend inside. Waves at it. Beautiful off-speed pitch. If you can see one that gets released and rolls off that fingertip of that pinky. He's already got that changeup pretty well tight and functional near perfection, which you don't see much in high school. And that's the, the third pitch. Nice strikeout, strikeout number four. Now for Novak. Yeah, fourth strikeout of the game, as you mentioned, and you're right. The fact that his motion doesn't change at all throwing that changeup makes it look like a fastball coming out of his hands. Comes and back with the heat. Knee high, outside, dots that corner of the plate. Well located. For Novak. Novak, by the way, coming into this game, had a career set for strikeouts of 155 in his career. 
It's not bad. 159 now with four here. Swung on. Missed, and that is again the leadoff hitter as they flip the lineup. Gruntner looked at the first pitch and grounded to short his first time up. A 214 hitter. Looking that runner back, and I know that was a point of emphasis also for the Huskies the last week is keeping an eye on those runners, keeping them closer to the base. This one's lifted high, infield. Coe looks like he's under it. He is, and the Panthers are retired in the top half of the third. They get a runner on base on the walk, but Strand, that runner at second base. So three, or excuse me, two and a half complete, no score. And now let's see what the Huskies can do to get something going. Here, bottom half of the second. I got to tell you, it's a... Uh, the pitching in here is with Bentrod. He's been pretty tough. Some pretty tight spin. Uh, just off the JV squad as well. Yeah, he's thrown well. And it's because the weather's great for it right now, Joe. It's 81 degrees outside. You get a little wind at this. Say 12 miles an hour, really. But it's really not that right now. It's very... It might gust at 12 at most, but it's pretty darn nice out here. 30% humidity. It is a nice week in the forecast. They're talking maybe high 80s, 90 tomorrow. Um, just, it's a great way to finish this baseball season. Uh, these uh, these teams are going to start to graduate their folks in the next couple of weeks, and no doubt there's some seniors that want to finish strongly here, and they're going to be able to do so in not so horrible weather, which is fine because they're owed that after a really horrible April. You bet. Some great notes also coming away from Cody Miller, head coach for Spring Lake Park, and he said Carson Bentrot uh, came to us from JV, has been pitching. Extremely well. He won his last start with a complete game shutout. And uh, we talked, uh, you know, with Andover as well. Some of the players for Andover getting their first varsity yeah. of everything, including the hitter stepping in right now for the Huskies in uh, Bittner. Yeah, Brett Bittner is first AB. You He's know, done some pitching this year for the Huskies, but uh, has not seen an at bat at varsity, and this is it. And they've, you know, they've needed what they've gotten out of Bentrot this year, have the Panthers. They've had some tough injuries to some oh. of their stronger players in the rotation especially, and they've had to depend on some of these young arms to step in and, and just give them some outs. And Bentrot has been one of those really, you know, it's, it's kind of like what we call found money right there. Nice pitch there. Up around the letters and on the corner. Nice little wrinkle. Yeah, you talk about a loss for Spring Lake Park. Out for the remainder of the season. And we'll talk about it here in a minute. Ground ball could find its way through. It is Bittner in his first official at bat at varsity. Picks up a single and he becomes the first base runner and the first base hit here the afternoon for Andover. Yeah, this hitting at the varsity level, nothing to it, right? Come you on, show up first AB, get a knock, you're on, everything's easy. What's so complicated about that? Hey, and first varsity elements are trending. Because at bats is also Drew Law. Excuse me, not Drew Law. Yeah, I got Drew Law. That's what I got. At least what, that's what I had. It is. I thought I saw yeah. a different number there. So it uh, came up at bat. But Drew Law, anyway, getting his first start in varsity at left field. Might, be a, field. Different, might be a different number, but at least that's what we have. This we one's have a different one. drilled to the gap. Right center. Law. Hits this thing clean. One run is going to come in. And Law ends up with a triple. Might be and a number change RBI. tonight. But yeah, I think that's going to be him there in a, just a different number. But he'll take it as he ends up on third with the triple. And this bottom of the order for the Huskies comes through with a big uh, couple of big hits right there. Especially some guys who needed some varsity A-B time. And then... Doesn't seem to be a problem as they come around, get a couple of big hits, and the Huskies are on the board here in the third. Beautiful. He hit that on the screws to the gap. No way anybody could track that down. Didn't have the altitude on it. So Law now at third, a triple and an RBI. His first hit of the season. And stepping in, Teddy takes a look at that first pitch. Yeah, Teddy Heller now will be hitting the nine hitter and we'll flip the lineup back over for the Huskies. And this is an example of, you know, paying attention in the dugout. I got to believe that both Bittner and Law paying attention to Ben Tross, looking for tendencies and patterns through those first couple of innings. 
because they didn't miss those. And uh, they were well struck, and it was almost like they were sort of sitting on it. They knew what was coming. They could anticipate. And you give a hitter a little bit of an edge to guess on something, and good things will happen. Reaches for this one. Runner's coming home. He's going to be out. It was a two-hopper, big high hop, and he darted home, did law on the ground ball by Heller. Back to the pitcher. And Bentrot stayed poised. Got control of the ball and made the toss for the first out of this third inning. But Law out at home, but got the RBI and a triple. Heller will be at first. Heller's got some speed on the football team this past season. A good slot receiver, but uh, he's got some get up and go. A couple of stolen bases on the season already for Heller. You know, with nobody out, though, I... I mean, I, I, I like the idea of committing to it, sure, but and, and sending it. But I, I just, there's no need to, to risk the play at home right there. I understand you're trying to make a play, maybe put some pressure on the pitcher, but that was too easy of a comebacker for Betros. And it was he saw that, you know, too quickly out of his eye and, and law no chance at the plate. Might as well hold tight at third and force him to go get the runner at first. Now you've traded away and out, and you, you didn't really gain anything out of it. You lost that runner at third. We could have been knocked in with a sacrifice fly or a well, ground ball to deep second there or there short. Too. Maybe you force something. There's a stolen base try. Kelly takes a look at the second strike there. Kelly, the leadoff hitter. Huskies flipped their lineup. Stolen base for Heller. Who said he was maybe potentially going to steal? Yeah. Note to self. And uh, he, Heller, has his third stolen base of the season. Runner at second. Chance here for Kelly coming in with an average of 256 on base percentage of 448 for the senior. Nubs this one back to the pitcher. This is going to get all the way to second for the out. It hopped right over the glove of Bentrot. And at second, ready to back up and make that play. Yeah, was Holland. Yeah, Holland did a nice job of staying with that and charging it. And that's an example, again, of maybe this grass being a little uneven because I think Bentrop was expecting one thing, got something completely different as it hopped right over his glove. And Holland was able to stay with it, though, and get that out. Runner, though, moves to third. So there's two down and a hit, still a run for the Huskies. That gets his first time up, grounded to third, breaking pitch. Off speed in and back to third with the runner now for the Huskies, this time with two outs. That's... Heller at third. Eckes comes in with an average of 390 on the season. 13 RBIs. I'll tell you what, if you're Coach Miller and you're SLP and you get out of this inning down one zip after there was a runner on third with nobody out and a run in, I think you're thrilled. Just a bit behind under the bat. And time of Eckes. He's down in the count, one and two. Scoring runs. A little bit troubling here for the Huskies this season. High pitch this one. This is a, a ground ball to short. Bing, bing, out by a half a step. Good throw. Some good velo on the throw over by Rell. And the Huskies are retired, but not before collecting a couple of hits. And the first run of the game, Huskies up 1-0 after three complete. Sunfield afternoon here at the Andover Athletic Complex. High school baseball coming your way. QCTV matinee. Joe Rulin along with Tim Anderson and Andover as they 
Go to the top half of the fourth, a one nothing lead. Josh Novak, two complete games on the season. He's thrown 32 and two-thirds inning. Yeah, the previous three, now at 35 and two-thirds. And has a career record of 17 and three as an Andover Husky and a career ERA of 1.12. We'll start the fourth. And now you have to, uh, if you're Spring Lake Park, try to scratch out a run or two against a guy with an ERA under one. That's going to be a challenge. That's what reminds me of my body mass, really. His ERA or the batting average? Um, the, the ERA, of course. Oh, okay. Wasn't of sure. my pinky, apparently. The body mass of my pinky alone. I think Jim Erickson said his calf. But uh, this one's lifted foul out of play. First pitch, first cut on that time by Balsamo. To mention in that first trip up, hitting 450 this season. Yeah, had kind of a lazy pop out to third in his first AB as Novak cruised his way through the lineup one time, just allowing the one walk. Goes down and gets this one and a diving attempt by Kelly. Just eludes his reach of his glove. A good looking left handed, almost a Wade Boggs like single. Very Wade Boggs looking right there. Good reference. No kid will get it, but that's great. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I think I, I got it, and that's really all that matters. And that's just a good piece of hitting. Get the barrel of the bat out. If you got to go the other way with it, that's great. Get yourself on. Good effort by Kelly at short as he was almost able to get a glove on that. But uh, all he really ended up doing was eating some dirt and kicking it up for everybody as well. Dangerous hitter now is Rell. Ian Rell struck out his first time up but comes in. With an OPS of 963 on the season. And that's where everybody got to watch their teeth a little bit right there. As that one came up around Rell's face and then got to the backstop. But that allowed Balsamo to get down to second. And now, if you're Spring Lake Park, you got some choices. Do you want to go ahead and let Rell swing away? Which I think you do. Uh, but you could definitely move runners around. You may have Novak rattled a little bit here. We'll see what happens. And if you're Rell, you're looking for one pitch here, the one that you want right there. He lifts this one, another right off the handle. Coe will have that at second. His second put out of the game, and that's the... Yeah, I, Second think, out here, the I think he got to hit a pitcher's pitch right there. And when you're up in the count, I, you know, I want them all for being aggressive, but you still got to hit yours right there. And I wouldn't have had an issue with him taking that. And if they get a strike on the inside part of the plate, all right, you eat that, you're one and one. But you don't want to hit a pitcher's pitch in that situation. You can tell Novak not afraid to come in and come in at those hands. Swung on, missed here, first pitch. Telso, Braden Telson. Telso, excuse me, 420 are four doubles on the season and 10 stolen bases. Runner on second, one out, a chance here for Braden to punch in a run. And just not seeing the fastball from Novak. When he gets that thing humming and he's got it up around the letters, it's just so fast enough to catch up with that and turn on it. Looks in here, outfield straight away for the number four hitter. Good job to self-manage. That pitch looks so good and then falls off the table on the breaking pitch. Yeah, it's an even better stop behind the plate that time. You already had the one wild pitch this inning. You don't want to let another one get to the backstop. That's a good job by Sam Abbas. And as we almost got absolutely destroyed right there by a foul ball. I, you need to, I expect you to cover me in these situations, I will, but you, I'm stone cold. I didn't even flinch on that one. Yeah, you didn't. I'm impressed. I could uh, flesh the hand. Swung on. Went waving at a fastball. Maybe a bit out of the strike zone, but uh, two outs, two strikeouts. But when you're protecting the plate, Joe, like when you have to protect in those spots, I now understand. all of a sudden you're hitting what Novak wants you to hit. And uh, that's that's very difficult, right? So you want to be able to to try to work the, work the count a little bit so that you get what you want. But when you fall behind a pitcher like Novak and you let him have his full repertoire, you're in trouble. Lefty hitter looks at the first pitch, a high hopper knocked down at second by Coe, makes a clean throw to first, and the Panthers are retired and strand a runner at second for the second consecutive inning. But they do get their first hit of the game. And uh, that's in the books, but meanwhile, another strikeout for 
uh, Novak that inning. They have him for five on the afternoon. It's an example of the fundamentals that they're working on here at Andover defensively. You saw that on full display right there from uh, from Coe. As Keaton Coe went down to a knee, did the classic fundamental tra- trapping that ball, not allowing that ball to get underneath him. He was going to knock that down or field it cleanly and get the runner at first, which is exactly what you taught all the way back in Little League. But sometimes you got to rehash those fundamentals. And uh, Coe did a, a terrific job right there. I well knew. done. Well, some of the freshman coaches have been saying he's just got a natural glove work. Just uh, Oxford Down was a great leader on that team as well. And uh, brought up here just about in the last week. Finally getting, I believe this is his third game at varsity. So he went with the team out to Moorhead this past weekend where they picked up a couple of wins. So a chance here for the Huskies. The Huskies, as I mentioned, 60 runs this season is what they've had. Now keep in mind that in 2022, they were 20 and six last season and they put together 160 runs and a 308 average. Yeah, everything's just a little bit down this season. Huskies get it going here. Dedeke finds one high, deep to left, center, going back, going back, it's off the wall, Dedeke. Lights one up for a two-bagger, hitting 317 coming into the game, and Dedeke. Went after the first pitch, the last inning, the last time he had faced Bentron and pulled it down the left field line. This one he caught in the gap, barreled that one up, picks up a leadoff double. Yep, and that sets the table for Sam Abbas, who's going to step in here, who flied to right on a ball that was well hit in his last at bat. And Andover starting to square up Bentrot just a little bit more than they were in the first couple of innings. They did that in the first couple ABs of the third, and they were able to get a run out of that. And Denicky starts things off nicely here in the fourth. Abbas hitting 269, off-speed pitch there. Nice. I love how both of these pitchers really pound the hands on those hitters. They're not afraid to come inside. They kind of, uh, you'll see them jump a bit even on those off-speed pitches. Some good movement. 0-1 pitch to second. Wailed on a line drive to right field. They are going to hold the runner. Dennegy there. Good suggestion out there. And uh, I would highly recommend to hold it with first and third and no one out. They'll get a courtesy runner here for the catcher. So they make that move right now. Do the Huskies and acting manager, acting coach Eric Feigum moving the pieces around here. And that's a smart decision to hold Denneke at third, obviously. But Denneke got a late jump thinking that ball could be caught on a line drive by uh, second baseman Holland. And once that didn't get caught, he just wasn't able to get the late break he needed to round third and get a chance to score. But you got runners at the corners with nobody out. And the Huskies looking for more here in the fourth. Richards steps in. Nick Richards averages 333. 419 on base percentage. Looking to pick up a couple of RBIs. He has two on the season. This one's down to first, going down to make that play. Oh. Now they're going to go to second, and that's going to score a run on the air. Situational decisions are just difficult. Good play at first to just try to stop that ground ball, but maybe tried to do a little too much. Yeah, you had the, you had the runner at first base right there. That's one where you didn't even have, I don't even think Denneke scores from third on that. I really don't. Like, I think you step on the bag there and it looks like he did, but I don't yes. I don't try to take that runner out at second. I, I just think, like, you eat that. You didn't have any chance at that play. That'll be an honored run and the Huskies nodded up at one apiece. Or excuse me, go up 2 nothing as we uh, look at a pitch inside. This goes to Keaton Coe. So you get a run in, you get a runner to third, you do get a runner out. I mean, I admire trying to get a double play there, but you just have to be very realistic at what you're throwing at because you're throwing behind the runner into a really tight window at second. Well, there's success percentage. Good drive oh here my. by Coe. He tags this one, going back to the rounding track and collecting it in front of the fence at right field. That will be a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Coe, and he tagged that one with two strikes. Okay. Barreled yep. that one up and sent it to the fence in right field. And then a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Coe. 
Yeah, and that's, again, we go back to the, the situational hitting from the, a couple plays prior to that. He's on second base there with one out, and then that sack fly might move him to third, but you still have a chance to get out of the inning just down the two runs, and now you're down three with the bases clear. Nice pitch still. Some great stuff. There was... Yeah, Bentron has got good stuff. I really like uh, the way he, especially his off-speed stuff's really good. Bittner got the Huskies going. First hit of the game, Fernando, or his first official at bat in varsity just last time up. I don't think he's got like necessarily the velo at this point, as you like to mention. That's your favorite word. Doesn't I don't know if he's got that to just blow it by hitters per se, but I think he changes locations nicely, and he does mix up speeds, and I, and I do like... I like a lot of his off-speed stuff, and when he goes to that and he locates it, he's tough to hit. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. The Huskies have put up a crooked number, and I'm thinking about maybe a, a name change to Joe Velo. This Works. one's lined to right field. And oh, that's through. Gets behind, got through the wickets in right field. Bittner going to stretch that single to a double, now he's gonna go in for the third. He'll take a third, I think it'll be a single and a two base error. I think so too. For Bittner, but his first hit was the exact same location. It's kind of like simplifying hitting. You don't have to move your hands too much if it's on the outside part of the plate. I'm gonna punch it to right field. Yeah, it's taking what the pitcher gives you and if he's gonna give you the outer part of the plate, you just go ahead and go with the pitch and uh, knock that thing into right field. Now he hit that hard and the big problem was that it was just it was just kind of mishandled out there by Tucker, and uh, that was a big challenge as far as making a play. Law lifts this one foul. I was trying to find it up top. It had that look of one that would just barely come over the fence and like an approach shot drop right in our lap. Now upstairs, and yeah, this bottom of the order did some damage back in the third, and now here they are up again in the fourth. and. And again, we talked defense at the beginning. We thought about that for Andover, but it's the defense this inning for the Panthers that has been the challenge. Law gets a look, and Law, of course, lit it up with a beautiful triple his first time up. This is his first game that he has started in the field for the Huskies, but I want to say this is second or third at bat. Third at bat of his Ooh, that got career, him. and that catches him inside. Could tell a little bit of maybe a change that time trying to come inside. Oh, so he's two for two for the on base percentage today is law. But you're right, Tim. Bottom of that order, bringing some spunk and some momentum. Yeah, and guys, that could especially be a game with, changer with for not a, team. a lot of uh, varsity ABs, too. Coming into, uh, you know, a big varsity game and, and giving them a nice boost in the bottom of the order. And that's got to give this Husky team a nice little shot in the arm, right? Something different, new energy. Heller swings at a pitch, a breaking ball out of the strike zone. Now obviously, it takes a village in baseball, Joe, right? You see that all the time in the big league, college, you name it, right? you got to have guys that you can depend on underneath, whether it's JV or, you know, whatever. you got to be able to say, can you come on up and give us some ABs or give us some innings? And the answer is yes. High cheese that time. Had him walk the ladder. They tried to get the runner. He got that third, a pickoff. Runners at first and third. Fakes the throw down to second. Trying to get Law, but got the runner at third napping. And the Huskies are retired in the bottom half of the fourth, but put up two and now extend their lead to 3-0 over Spring Lake Park. Hey, boss. Okay? Yeah, I'm good. You strong? I said I'm fine. Since I was little, it was only like me and my parents. You think you created family out of characters? Yeah, of course. I'm gonna take that and make it into a song. Really, 
Josh Novak takes the mound for the fifth inning here for Andover as they've put that crooked number up at two in that fourth inning now up three to nothing over the Panthers. The Panthers come in with a record of six and 11 and over a mark of nine and seven have won their last three. Novak came into this game 29 strikeouts away from breaking the Andover Husky pitching record. He has five strikeouts already here this afternoon and the career record for the Huskies at 17 and three, as I mentioned, 155 strikeouts for his career. Now he's at 160, but his ERA just phenomenal. His career ERA at 1.12. And now you've given him a three run lead here in the fifth inning. And now he's got a chance to just free wheel. And uh, I think this is a tough spot for Spring Lake Park. I think you'd like to see if you're the Panthers, try to get one here this inning. I mean, you don't got to get it all back, right? It's a, it's a long game. So you got three more trips up to the plate. But you don't want to, I think, get slammed down here one, two, three. You'd like to try to break through here a little bit and give your bench a little life. Again, Novak gets out in front, breaking pitch off the corner, no good. In the dirt, Novak, the type of pitcher, it's kind of got that uh, strength and the girth and size. Now, girth is your word. And, I wouldn't uh, go that far. Uh, I would say uh, the longer he goes, the stronger he gets. Popped up straight back right at us. Well, the one thing he does really well, and I mean, pitchers use this, or people use this expression all the time, and sometimes you don't really know what it means, but I really just love the way he kind of gets on top of it. Like, he, he's not a he's not a sit back and thrower. Like, I just feel like he, he sort of, like, straightens up on the delivery and, and really throws down at the plate. Yep, some good, and, some great extension. Like, all of his force is coming toward home plate in that moment after delivery, and that means he's giving full full blast as soon as he's moving off the mound. And some pitchers at this level just don't use that rubber real well to their advantage, and I think Novak is the exact opposite of that. I mean, he uses it perfectly. Good leg drive. There's a breaking pitch. And, hey, you can see he's got some great size legs as well, thickness there. He also, I know, wrestled early on. Up until about his freshman year, and but now he's too tall. Yeah, I feel. I mean, I don't yeah, know. it just feels <laughs> like they're all about five eight right now. When I watch wrestling, inside, good. Well, that was a great pitch. Again, another pitch coming inside and locked up that hitter. Strikeout number six. And again, a little self defense there as it was coming in. I, I wonder if there's some late movement on that pitch because Tucker. It just felt like it kind of ate him up there at the plate. Like it, it was coming inside on him, and I wonder if there's just some late life on that fastball as it starts to bust in on the hitter. And it's more of a self-defense swing. Carson Scott steps up. Was the first base runner of the game for Spring Lake Park, Drew Walk. This, of course, his first varsity game as well. Getting some key at bats against pretty impressive pitcher in Novak. And when I had a chance to talk with some different coaches in the community, Dr. Shannon Bland said of Anoka a couple weeks ago, and he thought it was going to be about attrition to this stage of the season. You know, how many guys can you get up from JV that can give you ABs, give you innings? That there were so many games and so many days. And, and, you know, it's so rare to not have any injuries in high school baseball. Nonetheless, in Minnesota, when you're pitching in the cold and you don't even get a chance to take the sweats off before you, you bust into a sprint for the season, that was the case also with Isaac Morton for Spring Lake Park. You seen just outside Morton on his way to Texas A&M for the, uh, the Panthers. But he went down earlier this season due to a, just a tendon or an arm injury. Which is really unfortunate. Hope he's uh, doing okay in his rehab process. Good pitch right there, down three, one in the count. Handover also out with one of their, what was it? One of the top hitters hitting just over 400, but also a tremendous pitcher. And when both pitchers. And Pardo. When both teams are looking at depth issues anyway, fouled straight back that time. 
When you look at depth issues anyway, like, oh, man, we're going to play eight games in ten days. How do we have enough arms? That's with everybody healthy, you wonder. Now you start to take a couple of those arms out of the equation, and sometimes, like, every third, fourth game, you might be completely different than what you think you were going to be at the beginning of the season. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes you're throwing and you're not getting to, some of that cold weather. You're not getting the stretching and warmth you need. Wave on. I'd be call that a bar room swing. As he looked, he was on a bar stool. Great breaking pitch. That's usually the cause of that swing is you kind of freeze and you still want to get a swing out on it and get your hands out on the ball, but he waved the wand and missed that time. Strikeout number seven on the afternoon now for Novak. And he wasn't hitting that with a boat or. I mean, that thing was <laughs> just a beautifully placed pitch by Novak and a tough spot uh, for Carson Scott that time. And here's Anders Holland. Holland bounced out to third in his first at-bat. This is only the end of the second trip through the order, basically, for this Panther team, and we're already in the fifth. Correct. One hit on the day for the Panthers, and one walk given up by Novak, and that's up at the eyeballs. Good luck there. That ball just tells. Here's the one thing with his follow-through as well. And when kids are going through their pitching development, they don't realize that most of that movement of the ball comes on that follow-through. To kind of de-accelerate that arm after the release of the ball. Somebody's just stopped throwing or the motion on some of that. But he does a good job with his extension and throwing through. And that's when you see those pitches coming in on the hands. If it's a fastball change up, that movement just accelerates. And he just gets loaded up, you know, like on that pitching rubber and really just explodes. Uses all of the mechanics to his advantage. Another oh, pitch, wow. caught looking, strikes out the side. Does Novak here in the top half of the fifth, eight strikeouts on the afternoon now for Josh Novak and uh, and overtakes a 3 nothing lead into the bottom of the fifth. And we had mentioned one of the pitchers that is out early on with Isaac Morton and uh, with his injury. And finally, uh, Caleb Tays. The pitcher that's going to Augsburg next year, he's, he'll be pitching on Saturday, one of a strong pitchers there. But uh, some of those injuries just, they, they happen, and um, you try to adjust, and it's been that case also with Pardo. Pardo, an excellent hockey player, uh, defenseman, but uh, this year just had some uncomfortable feeling in his arm, left in the Waconia game, and... Uh, I think they're going to do some further observations here and make some decisions. But he was hitting the ball well. But, again, he was going to be that third pitcher for Andover, which come playoff time, having three good pitchers and the, and the limits that you have in section play as well, but that, that's, that's a gift. Well, that's exactly it, and that's when you get to sections. Obviously, yeah, you want to hit, but if you've got some arms that you can depend on in those situations, and because I mean these are short, these are short games, like short series. It's not like you have to go and try to like, you know, run the gamut and win another twenty games in the playoffs. It's not like that. You can you know, win a couple of games, stay in the winners bracket. It's not a long road to the championship, and if you've got a couple of good arms that you can count on. That can work out quite nicely. But on the other hand, if you lose the first game and you got to run your way back through the bottom part of that, that's a lot of games in a lot of days. That it is. Huskies this afternoon playing a very clean game. As Teddy Heller steps in, the number nine hitter, bottom of the fifth. I hit to curse him, but I don't believe there's any errors on Andover. Not today so far. That's upstairs. Spring League Park, a couple of errors on the afternoon. Those errors have led directly to a couple of runs, certainly at least one for sure. Heller, a number back to the pitcher, last time up, and they caught that time. Law trying to score from third. This one's placed promptly in the right field. End of the bat, but just enough of the barrel of the bat getting out on that one is Heller to pick up a single. And another leadoff runner here for Andover, third consecutive inning. That's a really good piece of hitting by Teddy Heller. Just throwing the bat at the ball, little duck snort to right field, get yourself a knock, get on base, and now you got your speed in the number nine hitter, getting it back to the top of Patty Kelly. They flip the lineup again. This is the third at bat now for Patty Kelly. 
And Seems that, like that pitch might have him fooled a bit as he yeah, doesn't they, quite see it out of the hand cleanly. Ben, or. Bentrot's got that great off-speed stuff and that great breaking ball. Like That's where he's rolling. That time working a little slide step out of the stretch, trying to speed up Patty Kelly, also anticipating potentially the steal. And now that's a little bit of a telegraph, and you wonder what Andover will do now. Spring Lake Park comes in, winning their last four. Wins over Park Center, Cambridge I. Santee, Duluth, Denfield, and Hermantown. This one lifted up the middle and a base hit for Kelly. His first here of the afternoon for the leadoff hitter. Going station to station here are the Huskies. They stop Heller at second. Now you got a couple of ducks on the pond for Mason Eckes. Eckes, who has bounced to third, bounced to short. Again, one of the team leaders in average at 390 and 13 RBIs for the number two hitter. The problem for Ben Trot is just getting off to good starts here since the third. He gave up two hits and a couple runs in the third, gave up a couple hits to start the fourth, gave up a few runs there, now giving up a couple hits here in the fifth. First pitch swung on. Those breaking pitches, sometimes you look at hands. Not uncommon for a hitter, especially at the high school level, and maybe much see in the pro, but they they drop that hand below the ball, and um, that's what happened just underneath it. This one, another breaking pitch. He had to golf at this one, picked up at right for the first out on a flyout by Eckes. He's 0 for 3 so far this afternoon, and that'll bring up Luke Denicky. Denicky with a double, his first, his last time up. Yeah, not able to get it deep enough to even advance Heller to third, which they would have loved to have done that. But now you get one out for Tenneke, who does have a double in this game. And that's the thing. Like, if you are a, you know, sort of a mix-it-up pitcher like Ben Trott is, throwing great curve and change and changing a pace all the time, the key thing for your fastball, you don't have to throw it hard, but you do have to locate it. Bottom half of the fifth, first two runners on, this last hitter. And Eckes, Eckes. Flew to right field, could not advance the, at least that runner from second, so we stay with runners at first and second. One out in Denicky. Denicky wants that one back so bad. I think he felt like he had a cookie right there. 317 hitter. Watches this one inside, down the base and in underneath. That off speed pitch really was advantageous for the base runner. Able to pick up a few more strides before the catcher could receive the ball before the throw down. Yeah, double steal right there, and Heller's quick and got a great jump. That wasn't a bad throw even at short, or at the, behind the plate over to third. Wasn't a bad throw, but Heller runs so well, he was in there well in advance. Yeah, he's got that speed. Coaching third, Eric Feigham. With a good call there. Second, third now, one out. Chance for a couple... RBIs here, lifted down the third baseline. It's still fair. Tagged the runner just in time to get Denneke. Wow. An outstanding play at third on that high hopper. Gretner made that grab, tried to tag the runner in case he was going to get out. There's two outs now, and runners remain here at second and third. Boy, that was that was cool by uh, Gruntner there as he was able to stay with that. And that's a tough play because you got the runner kind of dancing off the bag. So you got to worry about him. You don't want to collide with him either. That one's taking a weird hop. You, I mean, a lot of concentration there at third base to make that play and get a good throw over to first. Abbas gets his hands under this one. A pop fly, can of corn to left, but wheeling off, getting it down center. Unable to push. Any insurance runs across with Andover, even though they have the first two runners on to start the bottom of the fifth. No runs, couple of hits, two left on. We are at the end of five complete. That's a 3 nothing lead for the Andover Huskies. Even though we didn't grow up together, he's my favorite brother. Hey, sis. I'm the baby of the family, and he's the gentle giant. What you know about poor George? Man, please, that's a classic. You know when they say people are a rare breed? Yeah, he's that. I'm sorry, I'll be back in a few hours. Don't worry, Shane, you know I'm for you. I know. Go get the football. Yeah. That was my favorite memory. He was always for you. This is a true story of me, Bridget Floyd, and this guy. 
George Perry Floyd Jr., my big brother. Over with a 3 0 lead, we are top half of the sixth. This is QCTV Sports presentation. Joe Rillen along with the Tim Anderson. And we are set here as the Huskies get ready to grapple and come at it here with we'll see if the Spring Lake Park Panthers will, will do something different this year. We talked about some of the errors, Tim. Uh, and speaking to the head coach with Spring Lake Park, he had said that we had 46 earned runs we've given up 46 earned runs teams have scored 95 total runs against us this year that's almost double Oof. yeah that that'll get you beat more often than not I mean you've got to you know you just got to take care of business when you have the opportunity in the field and you know it's easier said than done sometimes because you do you're at the mercy of sometimes conditions and cold and weather and and turf conditions and all of that stuff and I understand all that but sometimes that's just a you know a good chunk of that is just good old-fashioned fundamentals and how many times are you taking ground balls in the winter and you know how many times are you kind of you know working on your fundamentals and, and doing things like that and those are those are frustrating things when and, and it does feel like when it rains it pours on that stuff once that starts to roll that direction and teams start to boot the ball around it feels like it becomes kind of contagious Swung on, miss here by Tran. Which works the other way too, right? You get, you know, one team starts hitting, all of a sudden everybody on the team starts hitting. It, it kind of goes a lot of directions. I know the Twins were battling that for a chunk of time when they were hitting like 192 as a team or whatever it was. Sometimes you may be, hey, rushing it, maybe lunging your swing, uh, pressing yourself and maybe taking some swings at pitches outside the strike zone and you're not watching enough to get He's going, but nonetheless, here's a pop here. And oh, geez. Well, boy, Coach Miller didn't flinch, and I think I thought that went right through his legs. I mean, that is that is just moxie, if that's the case. I mean, I'd have been dancing out of there. It would have looked like somebody at a, at a country western bar with the way I was moving around. I see. A double two-step. Yes. Down in the dirt here, Novak misses. And I think that happens in the field, too. You talk about hitters pressing. That can happen defensively, too, right? You feel like you have to make the perfect play, and it's got to be exact. And sometimes you just got to be an athlete and trust yourself. Three ball, two strike. Delivery. This one dribbled back beyond the reach of Novak hustling in. Kelly, a quick scoop, left-hand throw, and in time. Oof, that's a close play there at first base, but I'm right on top of it. And they get Tran by probably, what, a half step at most? That yeah. can't be by much. Yeah, good sidearm, good quick release by Kelly. And just left maybe about a half a step. It was a bang, bang call out. But a key thing here, you know, it's Novak getting ahead and the Huskies getting that first out. That first out to me has always been kind of a critical piece. It sets that table. This will bring up Gruntner, the leadoff hitter. So they flip their lineup here for the third time, the 214 hitter. Get a strike call there, and you know, you take a look at that delivery through the center field camera. What also is tough about this is it looks like there's a little bit of a fall away towards the first base side. Not that time, but he really swings that leg around, does Novak. So it while it's very fundamental and herky jerky at the top, there is like a level of just wildness. I mean, he's legs and elbows at the end of the release point. A little like Clevenger, huh? With that arms and legs and yeah, everything. Yeah, I don't think that's around. a bad comp. I, I, yeah, I, I, that makes some sense. Minus the long hair, of course. But, but the one thing consistent, and you don't always see it from pitchers, is using those legs. He's got a great pace and uses that leg drive as well. Abbas goes up to have a conversation. Might just be a convo of whether or not it's, you know, quick trip afterward or if it's uh you know maybe hitting up on the mcdonald's app or whatever it is you know yeah i'm sure they're talking about me i'm confident but, that you know novak's got some reward points or abbas does i'm sure somebody's got a got a burger on the on the line <laughs> if they wanted it 
Hey, we talked about last year Andover with a record of 20 and 6 made their second consecutive trip to the state tournament. Uh, we talked about, hey, they had 41 doubles, 8 home runs, but a key component of that was essentially their 1 2 hitters, and Kyle Law, who's now playing at North Dakota State, hit 469 last year. Turned over five home runs, 22 RBIs, and also Noah D'Agostino, who had a heck of a year at Superior this season. He hit 361, had 21 RBIs, also uh, 20 walks, 10 stolen bases. So uh, Law also had 10 stolen bases last year as well. So that helps that season. So you got to find a way to pick up and get to that 308 average, and find a way to create more runs. And one way to do it is this pitching. When you keep it so tight in the games, most of the games for Andover this season have been, you know, I would say probably close to 80% have been decided by one or two runs. Yeah, close games. And now they may come get them here because it might be, you know, might be near, might well, be near pitch time here. Well, you're looking at, hey, you've got a long week ahead. That I believe is strikeout number nine. Yep. For Novak. So they're going to come, they might come get him here. So uh, we'll take a look at that. And all those, also BTW, right? Oh, by the way, the last time that a team has scored an earned run on Novak came against Elk River in a 4-2 win that Andover had. That was back on May 9th. Yeah, he's been just nails here in this game. Game's been moving along. Only about an hour and 20 minutes old, and they're going to stay with Novak here, but obviously maybe a quick convo about... What they're going to do here is Jay Balsamo steps in. Andover's team ERA comes in to 1.70. You know, one guy that I've enjoyed watching is Abbas behind the plate. He does a lot of stuff to set pitches up for Novak. You know, you watch him, he'll kind of do some traditional crouch stuff, but then he'll get lower by stretching a leg out and do some different kind of postures behind the plate. And it's all just to set the pitch up exactly where he wants it. Once again, setting that tempo and jumping out front on Balsamo with the called strike one is Novak. So, like, even there, look at how he's down on one leg this time, or one knee. One knee on the ground, out of the crouch a little bit, and it's just about creating some different looks and giving Novak a target that makes sense and giving the umpire something easy to look at as well. Like, if you shoot this glove in this spot, you know, I might give you the inch on the corner. Well, having trust in your catcher that he's going to be able to... ...in critical times or on key plays. It, it, you've seen it, hey, with the Twins in the past, i got to dig down deep into the dirt, and i got to block this one, even though I know it's going to probably hit the dirt upon... A swing, but uh, first phase is to block it and then try to get it. But he does a great job of building some trust, does Abbas. So again, the swings staff. a leg out here, now goes low, wants it in. And uh, Novak just bounces that to him. But like I said, I'm always fascinated with, you know, again, there's so much. Sometimes catchers can be really rigid and, and they don't bounce around a ton. Abbas is not one of those. Very athletic catcher. He's almost trying to emulate how I'm standing right now. Yeah, I think that's almost kind of like a weird sign you guys have right over by our cameraman. You yeah. got to dive over and get that. Hey, a call out to all the camera personnel up above those dugouts. Not even any hockey gear. No, no hockey Chest gear. Chest or nothing. Well, if I was them, I'm using the camera as my defense mechanism. I understand those are expensive, but just put that on. You know, Taylor will pay for it. But I mean, you got to dive out in front with that. Novak, obviously, to a level in this pitch count. Yep. So Which, they're going to go ahead and move him right now. With uh, hoping they were hoping to get him out so he could finish this inning, but he's got to go now, and he's on his way out. But a really great start from Novak. Gets Nine a nice strikeouts hand. on the afternoon. One walk, I believe, and um, a couple of hits surrendered. But again, a goose egg. Some shutout pitching again for Novak. Ends. This time out now with 164 career strikeouts. And, of course, the ERA, career ERA, and the season's ERA, he came in with a .64 ERA. It's tough to get that thing any lower, but he will. And I believe they've gone to Bittner, right, the designated hitter who's going to come in now and pitch. And Bittner comes in with uh, a couple of save opportunities, and 
he has uh, been able to accomplish and capture those saves. He's pitched two and a third innings. Three walks, three strikeouts, and a whip of 2.14. He's walking into a, a pretty decent situation. He's up 1-2 in the count, and there's two out in the inning. He might even have to just throw one pitch, but he's going to get time to loosen up here. Well, I'll tell you, Jay Balsamo, probably happy that uh, Novak ran out of pitches as uh, he has not fared well today against Novak. Novak, if they can hold on, will pick up his 18th career win of the career there for Novak. Meanwhile, he could also move to 5-0. and oh, But right now, Huskies are doing something that, that they've lacked much of the season in putting together win streaks. They're looking to make this the fourth win in a row, but they're playing good D and playing some clean ball. Yeah, very clean game today. One walk today was all for Novak. Had the one hit, as you mentioned. Plenty of strikeouts, but most of the balls that were hit, not super hard hit. Got a lot of ground balls tonight as well. There's some pop-ups to the infield but nothing that really scared the outfield. First pitch there, fouled back and over on the season. Started the season with a nice win over Maple Grove and then dropped their next three, including to Chaska and the Rogers and then beat Champlin Park in Mayo, then lost their next two to Chanhassen and Blaine. Won their next three against Coon Rapids, Waconia and Elk River and then dropped two more to Osseo and Anoka. Just having trouble getting into that cadence, but then they came out with a nice start against Centennial, picked up a 2 nothing win. Then again, Novak getting that. I was talking to Coach John Heath, and he says, hey, when you look at the season and you look getting ready for the playoffs, you'd like to have the records we've had in the past just misses. Oh, they called it a punch out on a called third <sighs> strike. That looked a little up in that strike zone, and Balsama is retired. And so with are the Panthers. We're going to the bottom of the sixth. It's a 3-0 lead for the Huskies to take a look at the schedules. And as I was just saying, they just couldn't quite get into a flow. But, uh, you know, John Heath had said, hey, you know what? This may be kind of our hit-the-switch time. Yep. You know, that centennial is kind of where I draw the line and say, this is when we hit our season. It's this a chance is to, to win begins. some games coming in to finish it off. Obviously, they got Robbinsdale Armstrong coming up here and Brainerd and a good chance to get a couple of wins there to finish out your year. If you win today, I mean, that gives you a chance to go 12-7, and seven, which I don't think would be too bothersome, you know, for, for Andover. Spring Lake Park, I understand they got to go to Holy Angels, finish up with Mound West Tonka. So their last uh, Northwest Suburban Conference matchup of the season. Both of them wrap up at about May 25th on Thursday. And they begin section play, and everyone begins the seeding component. And, hey, then you get a chance to play some of these teams again, maybe playoff times. And and I'll tell you, any type of playoff ball, sporting event, hockey, basketball, lacrosse, football, it's different. And I, especially up here right now with the way baseball and softball, there's so many teams that I feel like are – in the ballpark of, of each other, where mm -hmm. I think on any given night you could get a win. We saw that the last couple of weeks ago on QC when Anoka came back and beat um, beat Rogers, and Rogers, by all accounts, was you know a team that's been having a strong season in, in girls' fast pitch softball, and yet Anoka won that game. You saw Blaine beat Anoka in fast pitch. You've seen some baseball like that. Anoka Andover game could have gone either way. That baseball game the other night, mm -hmm. that was a four three win for Anoka in a hotly contested, great atmosphere at Castle Field, and. You know, that could have gone just as easy the Huskies' way as it did the Tornadoes' way. I mean, I feel like this is wide open. Richards leads off the inning. A two-hopper to short. A blazer over the first. Richards and retired, and so is the first hitter here in the bottom of the sixth for Andover. Meanwhile, one other game that the Huskies have is they play the Bemidji on, did we say that, on the 25th, I believe. Yeah, Bemidji, I, not I Brainer. Brainer. Oh, and it's Bemidji instead. Okay. And that's just to me, like, again, it just goes back to what I said, that there's just no easy outs when you get into section play. So these teams got to be ready. Ground ball over to first. Boy, first swing at it there, and Co is retired. Didn't quite get what he wanted on that. Well, three quarters of the way through the swing, you could tell. Tried to, to <laughs> descend on the, uh, the, the speed of that swing and nubbed it back at the pitcher. Too quickly retired here for the Huskies. 
Yeah, Husky's trying to end this thing uh, again right before the Matlock Marathon for Joe here oh, so yeah. that they I can get, get everybody home. So clearly they want to get back out there for the top of the seventh quickly. They feel good about where they're at. Absolutely. We can't miss that. My VCR uh, is having trouble recording lately, so <laughs> that half-inch once, tape. Once again, just, the uh, kids have no idea what that is. First pitcher, second pitch, good location right there. Impressed, though, so far going the full six innings. Yeah, I think Ben Trout, you know, he's given up some hits here, especially these last few innings, but I really think he's battled nicely. There's a nice little bouncer. Out in front again. A couple of weak ground balls back to the pitcher. One as well for the third out, and the Huskies are retired. Bottom of the sixth. 3 nothing Lee will be back for the top half of the seventh. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. You got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate it. You got it. Huskies, not that dog. That's not a husky, up. but that yeah. is not not a husky. Undersized, husky. little undersized. And over three nothing lead, a clean game as we mentioned before, but also some good hitting for the Huskies for the most part. They've only struck out twice in this game, and it's, it's a season this year where they've had, I think I had about 106 strikeouts on the season. Yeah, they put the ball in play today, and that, that really paid off in the third, fourth, and fifth innings. They were able to make some things happen, get some guys on base. Didn't always bring them all in. But it starts with getting leadoff men on and, and moving some runners around, and they were able to do that very effectively in the middle part of this game. But last licks for the Panthers, and they got to do it against Bittner here in the seventh. Bittner again. This is his third save attempt of the season. This opportunity. He's two for two so far with two saves. And looking to collect now. He has three. He has gone two and two-thirds innings this season. The first pitch swung back. Just missed. Bittner got his first. Varsity at bat this season, and then that first at bat, he got a single. And uh, on the flip side, Ben Trot, I thought, again, gave a nice lift to Spring Lake Park today, gave them a chance, gave up the three runs. Maybe not all earned because of some uh, some errors in the field, but I thought he pitched well and gave them a chance in this game, and again, threw some innings. Nice spinner that time by Bittner, good location. Fastball comes back, this one's lifted high and just over the backstop. We'll get another look. Huskies, they can hold on. We'll move to 10 and 7. And you get that mojo train going. And it's important also to kind of get that feel of, hey, how you should play. Yeah. Air free, making some good plays when you can, getting the ones you can, good pitching, uh, fast. The pitchers are you know, set up a good tempo and some timely hitting. Swung on and miss. Bittner, his second strikeout. It's the second batter he has faced since taking over for Josh Novak. That is, uh, I believe, 11 total now on the day for Andover pitching, and that's going to get it done. Bittner looking to battle it up here. Is facing a good part of this lineup. He's Looking at uh, number five here, Braden Telso, who came into the game with a 500 average. The list of this one gets the barrel hit out in front of this one, drives it near the fence, and he'll get a double. 
got the bat head out in front of that pitch. You could see he made contact with that way out in front of that strike zone. And now, hey, it's a chance here for the Panthers to get something going. They're going through the meat of the order right now. And stepping in, number five hitter, Connor Larson. Yeah, these last three outs are always the toughest to get. And you see uh, Talso just happy to see something other than Novak as he struck out a couple times before that A-B, but he's able to barrel that one. And I thought he almost lost it to the left field. Uh, left field, there's no stands out there, but thought I thought he'd hit it out of there. But it was close. Well struck ball by Talso. And that puts him in scoring position. And they need base runners, and that's one of them. 308 team average this year for the Panthers. They've got a threat going now. Down by three, there you get another look at the knock and that double by Telsel. Just the second hit of the day for the Panthers. Larson ready here with the runner on second. Takes this ground ball up the middle, a base hit. That'll probably score. Telsel, it will, an RBI single. And hey, the Panthers have something going here. Yeah, good piece of hitting. And, and this is, an, again, an example of a you know a pitcher like Bittner, not as comfortable, maybe out of the stretch, looks a little different. Leaves that one out over the middle of the plate and allows Counter Larson to see it and drive it. And he gets a base hit, and this gets a tying run to the plate. That Ashton is, Tucker. Yep, yeah, absolutely. You kind of feel a little bit of a shift. And now if you're Bittner, you're going to have to dig deep here a little bit. Ducker, 12 RBIs on the season, 268 hitter, one pitch popped up. Coe looks like he's got this one. He does. Gloves it, secures it, out number two. But just a huge out right there for Bittner. Didn't take time to kind of look at some pitches when you got the new new guy in. Just wanted Maybe to get a on. fastball there and just, just got underneath it, popped it right up. And now all the hope falls here to uh, the new hitter in the lineup. Number eight for Spring Lake Park. Number eight is Gr uh, Grant Ricker. Ricker so, comes in, hitting 507 for 15 on the season. And left-handed hitter going to look for something to drive here. Coach Miller may be seeing something with Bittner as far as a lefty maybe being able to see or do something a little late in this lineup just to try to shake things up, hitting for Scott. 0-1 count. Bittner gets him to bite on this one, and he's got some great movement because you see each of the players trying to get after that pitch, and they beat that thing into the ground. So, Up ahead in the count, 0-2. So, yes, the it is a 3-1 game. They have not updated it on the scoreboard, but it is a 3-1 game for uh, Andor. So you're not seeing it on our screen because we're wired into the scoreboard. So if they have not changed it, we haven't put it quite on our screen yet. But it is three to one, just for those of you scoring at home, playing the home version of today's game. That's right. And keeping score at home, I'm sure. A lot of people do, I'm sure. The 0-2 delivery, 1-2 delivery, and then make that 2-2 two -two delivery. Twos are wild here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A two-run lead for Andover here in the top half of the seventh. Andover looking to extend their win streak to four. Bittner now delivers. High pitch this time up around his shoulder and goes to 3-2. And that'll be a full count. wonder if this is some gamesmanship here by the uh, the scoreboard of Andover just saying, you know, we don't want to put it on the board. What do you think of that? Sometimes they wait until that inning is done before they put those ones up. But, but I we'll see. they're pretty quick to get those Andover ones up. <laughs> Called for the third strike. Punched out for that final out of the game. Pinch hitter that time, unable to come off the bench and get that spark. So a win for the Huskies. That was the third strikeout, I believe, for Bittner. And he was in for an inning in the third. Picks up the save. Getting the win will be Josh Novak. For Novak, his season continues. He moves to 5-0. and And career-wise, he moves to 18-3. and Had nine strikeouts on the afternoon. Yeah, great performance by Novak. Really solid, uh, just a good solid baseball game from this Andover Huskies team today. Didn't make an error in the field, got some timely hits, scored some runs, got a lead for their ace, and let him take care of it from there. And it was a, a well-played baseball game for this Huskies team as they pick up their 10th win of the season. 
Some of the broadcasts coming up ahead here for QCTV includes Minneapolis Southwest at Champlin Park. That'll be a great one on the 23rd. And then girls lacrosse, OPC at Anoka on the 24th. June 4th, it's going to be Champlin Park and the Anoka graduation, Andover graduations. You're going to be the featured guest, I'm guessing, here on June 5th as the Anoka graduation. One, of, all the, those one of the two, one of the two. I don't have all 540 this year. I got about 280. That is impressive. They do a great job. Hey, Tim, awesome. Thanks for joining us. Tremendous job. You threw a perfect game <laughs> and called a perfect game. The Huskies close to a perfect game. They take home a 3-1 to one win behind Josh Novak and nine strikeouts, a couple of key hits. Huskies, with that win, now move to a record of 10-7. And, and meanwhile, for the Panthers, they snap a four-game win streak and fall to 6-12. Thanks for joining us. Huskies win 3-1. to one. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the crew and the staff, Taylor in the truck, and Ryan and the crew, everyone. Have yourself a major league evening at a minor league price.